Welcome to another edition of Inspire Pro TV. Later on tonight, we take a look at the Barn Burner Pure Prestige Championship match from our most recent event, License to Death Wish 3. But first, let's dive into the vault and travel all the way back to 2014 at the first ever Ecstasy of Gold. It was an epic clash for the ages when Chris Hero went one-on-one -on -one with Ray Rowe. Check it out right now. Well, a little fly told me that these two are familiar with each other because, well, Metropolis is not that far from, well, the state of Ohio. Here we go. In wrestling hero, I know that a hero game is the type to fill you out. And here we go with the top key lock. And there we go. Hero's going to want to fill his opponent out as wrestling. Hero is such a great wrestler that he can tell what type of strategy to go with you just off the chain wrestling well. You know, a lot of people have talked over the past month about Hero's, you know, performance in one of probably the top companies. But he left on good tones and he, he left on very good, good terms. terms. And throughout that time in that company, he was just as tough, he was just as athletic, and he was just as... Whoa, oh, Hero with the best. dancing. But you have to keep in mind his experience down south is, well, I mean, that's me. Oh, stalemate here. You have to keep in mind that his experience down south in Florida is, well, it's just as good as any experience around the world. So that makes him just that much better. And just as Chris, he takes it as a teaching And guys are sizing up. See, here's the thing with Hero. Hero does not use his leg. He is all upper body. He trained at the Muhammad Ali training camp, I believe. And Ray Rowe, he's all body. More of the uh, mixed martial arts as far as jiu-jitsu and mixed martial arts goes. Oh, look at this stretch here. Oh, my God. That it does. Oh, and that applies pressure on the arm. There it is. He's got a, looks like he had a Fuji arm bar there. He, that applies, or Koji, or Koji, I'm sorry. That applies pressure on the arm and the neck, which Hero loves to just strike at the neck in the jaw area. Whoa. There we see a bit of that power. He's got the rope. Get Hero up from the ground, but Hero getting that rope break. And let's not, let's not neglect the, the height issue here. Hero is a tall mofo. He should be playing basketball besides playing the wrestling. Which then again, he doesn't play again, wrestling. You can't knock out with an that is absolutely true, unless you're Andrew Biden. Uh, <laughs> and here we are, guys sizing each other up. Lock up. Ooh, he's got a hold of his face there. Ooh, he's got control. He's got control. There it is. And he takes the arm. And he... Oh, man. I can tell you. That hurts. <laughs> Wrestling with Hero, I know. Pers and, and honestly, I just tapped out to him two weeks ago. Oh my goodness. He, uh, his one of his favorite holes is the. Com uh, oh, he's got it. He looks like he's going for an arm bar. Oh, he's got a leg. So he's got a head there. His favorite move is the cravat. This friend looks. Uses that a lot to lay down his opponents. And here we go. Oh my God. Oh, what is Hero doing? British wrestling. All that and the yeah. To escape the clutch of Ray Death Row. But look at Hero. He is still feeling. It. He's still feeling it. Yes, this is wrestling. We know. <laughs> Here we go. That's a sign of uh, that's a sign of uh, of honor, I guess you can say. No pun intended. <laughs> and he's got that side headlock applied. 
Ooh. Oh, come on, Hero. He's got a lot of strength. You are not. And he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the guys like Jack Stang, Showtime Scott Summers, and Jake Espliska. Oh, Hero had a steam. Ooh. But almost took more Hero than he did out of And this is where the um, outside sports are played. If he was a football player, he would know the deep deep. He's a basketball player. Fan of Duke, actually. Oh, here we go. Okay, Ray Roll's gonna go. Drop down. Oh my God, beautiful. Oh. Two. Only two though. You know it's gonna take. Oh. Oh. And I'm just gonna let you know. I gave that to Chris Hero in our match, and it hurts. Personally, I know because I've taken knees off high impacts. Oh, God! You don't want to go strike for strike with Chris Hero, but I guess he just set off the first gunshot. And it just punch right to the side of the head and the ear. Oh, the Hero! Joey, he's got some mean chops as well. Ooh, big forearm strike there right to the jaw. Whoa, big punch. Hero being smart, knowing his ring awareness and knowing where the Calvin is at at all times. Sorry about your face. Oh, oh. straight boot right to the side. He's such a gentleman. He apologized before kicking him in the face. This crowd is obviously behind Chris Hero. Oh, 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 four oh. minutes strap. You do not. I must say, the, the time when I wrestled, oh, was I, I couldn't see that. Was that to the jaw or to the chest? But either way, it hurt. Either way. And let's just be honest here. Chris Hero is a, oh, oh my goodness. Chris Hero is a tall man that wrestles like a little man. So athletic. <laughs> Here we go, he's got a hold the neck. Yeah, he oh, he got low! Oh. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the first forearm shot. Chris Hero is so confident that his forearm shots are that direct that he can hit you and get a 20 count. And, and Raymond, Raymond may be laid out. And these people love their hero. And let me tell you something, I've been in a ring with Chris Hero. To be able to wake yourself up or just climb up from a Chris Hero forearm shot, you have to dig down so deep that you like have to think about the future, people that motivate you, your why that motivates you. And I mean, it, it takes a lot, my friend. It takes a lot. Possibly be Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I believe that is Ray Rowe's uh, fiance or girlfriend. And that shows you how much is behind this mask. That she is worried. She is worried off of that just one forearm shot from Chris Hero. Jesus Christ, she is jacked to the gill. One, two, oh my goodness. Chris Hero can't believe it. Honestly, I can't believe it. Oh, here we go, drags him out. Ooh. And you have to think. One, two. When you, if, you, if you're a fan of boxing, boxers take so much. Oh, cravat lock. Just like you talked about. He's got locked in tight. Um, boxers take so many shots to the jaw. At any moment, just one shot can just, it can be it. It's the sweet spot. And Hero, he has such a tall, lanky advantage that he can always aim at his opponent's jaw. He always has a height advantage. Oh, 
Oh my goodness, I'm sorry to cut you off, but a huge jaw shot. But well able to kick out too. He's got no glass jaw. Are you familiar with the fight between Bugless Douglas and Mike Tyson? I'm not. Uh, the fight between Bugless Douglas and Mike Tyson. Oh my God! No one believed that Bugless Douglas could knock out Mike Tyson, but he did. He did. And ladies and gentlemen, tonight we could possibly see that same reenactment of that fight. Oh! I would not doubt Ray that throw, but Ray, Oh my. I've only seen one man knocked out in my life, and I said, <laughs> and, and let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, when I saw that, I wasn't too happy about it because, well, it hurt, and someone took his shoes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. And he's just applying pressure with with his forearms against his neck and just weakening that neck and that jaw area, that head area. The more winded you are, the more the more you are able to just get knocked out that easy. Oh, come on, Hero, you're better than that. I don't think that he's taking it very lightly, but I think at this point in time in the match, I feel like his confidence is riding high that he feels like he's got it in the back. He knows he's in the drugs. Absolutely, absolutely. Ooh, and he's getting top key lock. Oh, Ray Rose going to the hair a little dirty. A little dirty, but it's what you have to do. I mean, but that hand still hurts, though. All that punishment he's taking, but he's doing the strike. Now, Ray Rowe uses his right hand to punch, and Hero has put a little bit of pressure on that hand to make it hard for a striker to hit. And Ray's just trying to and, with it no matter Oh, but I don't think that last one worked, and he dodged it, and here we go. Oh! He right on the top of his head. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you know, but as a professional wrestler, when your ability to strike is taken out, it sucks. Oh! Stone Cold would probably be confused by that, but I love him. Oh, cross on Barton, he's, he's got to hook the legs, he's got to hook the legs. Then he's got a little bit of hook, but not too much. Ray Rose fighting it. There it is, that's what you need. You need to clamp two hands just to stop that. Oh! Oh, And, and the people must know the leather on professional wrestling boots sucks the worst because it can cut you, scar you, and hurt you. I feel like Hero's getting a little frustrated. Wow, I feel like Hero's getting a little frustrated with Ray Rowe. And there he is, back to the cravat, back to the neck area, back to the jaw area to, to take the air and take the wind out of uh, Ray Rowe to make him, uh, you know, more uh, you know more able to hit the elbow strikes for him to knock out quicker. He's got a good clasp on his fingers. He's just putting all the pressure down on that man, cutting off that wind pipe. But Ray Rowe, his hand shows a sign of life, and these people are giving life into him. Kind of like an RPG when you use a potion. <laughs> Play RPGs? I don't want to hear dabble. I want to hear I'm all in, balls deep. Ooh. Ooh, back to that front face. Oh, oh. He's fighting. Oh, straight to the chop. And chops take a lot of wind out of you. Ask Gary J. He knows a lot about taking wind out of people. And Hero with the athleticism. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I, oh my goodness. That's where the hype and the that's athleticism all here. Oh, and there's the strength. Oh. There is the brute strength of Ray Rowe. <laughs> and he, Ray Rowe is trying to dig down deep. He doesn't know what to do. He looks loopy. He looks all over the place. Oh, and Hero back to his feet. Ray Rowe. Oh. There's one of the forms of his own. He's got 
Oh, here we go. One of the hardest hitters in Texas, Ray Row. He has to. Whoa. Serve it up. Team up suplex. There it is. Ray Row filling it. He's starting to get a little momentum behind him. Oh, here it is. Yikes. Oh. That looked like that took real. Two. Oh my goodness, Ray Rowe looks a little bit in shock. Stay on him, Ray Rowe, stay on him. This is, key. this is Chris Hero, the best in the world. This guy's talking to me, what'd you say? Who, Ray Rowe? Let's be honest, it's Chris Hero. <laughs> it's Chris Hero. That guy looks like Mike Poser. Oh, roll through. Ray Rowe, Death Row. Oh, Hero reverses. Arm drag. Oh, my God. Lights out, gentlemen! Mike Tyson has won! Oh, oh my God! Mike Tyson cannot put Douglas away! And Chris Hero looks to be in disbelief. And the crowd that I think was a bit more behind Hero is now on Ray Rowe for him to kick out with the rolling elbow. He's put a lot of the best in the world away with that. Davey Richards, Eddie Edwards, and the list goes on and on. Here we go. Oh! 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 He catches the boot. He saw that. Oh! Wait a minute. Here we go. He's going for the pin here. One, two. The thing I love about Chris Hero, he pins you any way he can. Both, oh my goodness, the way that he pins an opponent is so effective. He doesn't care how he gets his shoulders down, he tries to get his shoulders down any way. I love it. Like we mentioned, Andy Dalton not getting all the pressure down when he starts shoulders, Chris Hero never makes that mistake. Absolutely, I agree. Good way to come back into that. All right, Chris Hero. What could he be going for? Here we go. Oh, he's going to the tippy top. Oh. Fight, but no one home. What is Ray Rock going? Oh. Oh. What? This is it, Eamon. Oh. Oh, oh my goodness. This is not the end. Ray Rose, you gotta stay on him, brother. This isn't Jake, it's the showtime. This is Chris Hero. Stay on him. He's going for that Ray Rose, but he's applying pressure down. He's putting pressure down on his body. Here we go. Oh, oh another one. Oh, one, two. Oh. oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm such a mark. I love it. I love the world of professional wrestling. I love it. Hero. Coming up. Mafia King. No. Oh. One, two. Oh. God damn it. God damn it. I feel like I'm watching the Spurs go against the Miami Heat in the finals again. When is it gonna end? What is gonna put either man away? Oh, he's dear God. Oh. Brings the knee pads down. Oh. oh. And he has his knee down. Keep in mind. Big throw. Tornado oh. kick. And hero. Eamon. I love you. This is it. Sweet mother of pearl. I can't tell you why it's not, but it's not. Some wow. Ray is finding something in him. And good God, I agree. What are you going to do about it, Chris Hero? What are you going to do? Ladies and gentlemen, I must tell you, right now at this moment, I am loving professional wrestling more than I've ever loved it. Oh. oh Dude, oh, that's what he's got. Both, both men are legit fighting spirit moment right now. Oh, I dare you, I dare you to find two harder strikers in the world of professional wrestling. This is inspired. Oh, and that inspired me to get more. Side. Oh, hero! Oh. There he is, Hangman! No! Here is your 
your winner, Ray Jeff Rowe! Where's my hat? What? Where's my hat? One blow to the Where's back my hat? Ray Rowe picking oh. up the biggest win of his professional wrestling career. Dear Lord. Good God, what a matchup. Eamon, I love you. Ladies and gentlemen, this match was two Goliaths, two gladiators going at it. Let's give them their moment. At License to Death Wish 3, Ricky Starks gave Team Super Academia members Joe DeMero, Mark Champion, and Prince Adam the opportunity of a lifetime when he put his Pure Prestige Championship on the line in a high-stakes four-way match. With Ricky at risk of losing his newly won prize and three hungry athletes seeing this as their sink-or-swim moment, it made for one hell of a contest. See for yourself right now. Oh. And now they, now they go to blows. I mean, this is what they got to do, I think. You know, I don't know how, how much these three men can really prepare for a match like this in the fact that it is one of their first big title matches in this company for the biggest title in this company. Right, but at the same time, they all know each other so well. Because as you said, they train together. They train together at AAPW. They all learned under George De La Isla. And then, you know, the, the three challengers learning under Ricky Starks and under ACH. So, you know, this is one of those things where, you know, they know, again, they just know each other so well. You know, how much, how much can one person, who's going to be that one that finds a way to innovate themselves enough to catch the other person Ooh. off guard? Nice trip there by Prince Adam yeah. taking Ricky Starks all the way out onto the floor. And you, and you got to think, there's also nerves and butterflies that play into effect. It's now, ooh, champion able to block whatever Prince Adam has in mind. These guys got to be nervous as hell deep down inside. Yeah, yeah, this is their first huge opportunity in, in Inspire Pro Wrestling. First huge title match. You saw. Nice drop kick there by Prince Adam. You yeah. know, I can, you know, some of their families are here tonight, I know. Some of their training partners are here tonight because they know how important this match is. Adam with a dive to the outside. And this, I, like I said, and Prince Adam's showing it right now, this is sink or swim for these three men. Much in the way it was for Zach Taylor when ACH said, I'm gonna put you uh, in a pre prestige title match for my first defense, or, or excuse me, my second defense in the main event. And, and you have to prove yourself. You have to earn your spot in this company. And Zach Taylor soared, soared with you know, flying colors with his performance in that contest, went on to even become Inspire Pro Champion. You know, what could, oh, Mark Champion with a bulldog there on Adam. DeMero now off. Big drop kick there by DeMero, but you're right. And you know, that's another thing to watch. Which one of these, which one of these challengers uh, is going to find that same vibe? Whether they win oh, the match, small win the package. Title. They win the match, win the title, or they make that that showing to warrant maybe a title match down the road. Demero with that nice drop kick. Demero's somebody who, ooh, much like Champion and, and Adam, but definitely Demero. You know, it's been striving a little, getting a little bit more opportunity here in Inspire Pro Wrestling as of late, but you know. Definitely a big jump here going from the uh, Doorbuster pre-show at our last event to the Pure Prestige Championship match. And I think DeMero realizes the scope of it. I think you're right. And now Ricky starts back in the ring. Plants him down into the back, comes charging. Big running Yakuza kick. And that kick is lethal by Ricky Starks. Waist lock now by Mark Champion. Try for the back elbow, blocked. Shot to the gut on Ricky Starks. Ricky springs off, catches him, DDT! Oh, nice spinning DDT there by Starks. And you mentioned the resurgence that Ricky Starks has had over the last year or so as he catches Prince Adam. He's got him holding him in a waist lock. Oh, God, sends him over into Mark Champion. I mean, it's gotten to the point where promoters from around the world have been contacting Inspire Pro about Ricky Starks. Ricky Starks has always been a guy from the very beginning, first show at this company. You know, you just look at him and, and, and you hear him and you see him wrestle. Nice bitch, a Noku driver there on DeMero. Kick at it too. You knew from the minute he picked up a microphone that he was going to be a future star in professional wrestling. 
You're absolutely right. And in the six years in this company, Ricky Starks just has really just grown as an athlete, grown, grown with his confidence even, so to speak. I mean, you, you, you hear him, but, you know, even, even somebody, you know, as confident as Ricky Starks tends to be, you have to, you know, tell yourself and you have to, you know, kind of, you know, fight for yourself, so to speak. You're right. I know Steve Arino had some issue with that, saying Ricky politics. I don't think Ricky politics. I think Ricky knows that he's good. He knows how talented he is, and he is not going to be quiet about it. And that's, that's, the, absolute, that's the absolute truth. <laughs> Ricky starts having a little fun with it. I guess that was uh, Prince Adam's headband as Ricky Starks comes back here over by us. And hold a chair now. Now he's got a chair. Uh, he's having a hard time you know, he's trying to fold it. Oh, just sliding it right into the gut of Prince Adam. I mean, technically, you know, you can't call this match for disqualification, it being a four-way, one fall to a finish. And referee Alex Morosa is definitely going to give some leeway. He is definitely giving leeway as Starks lays that chair shot in on Mar Mar Mark Champion. And now he gets back in the ring. You see Joe DeMauro trying to get up. Ricky now with a hold of the chair. Now looking to wedge it into the top turnbuckle. Definitely. He's setting it up for something vicious. Got something in mind. Ricky Starks, you know, he's not going to take it lightly on these guys just because he knows them, just because he has helped them grow, so to speak. Yeah, he wants to remain oh, your Prestige champion, and he's going to do what it takes to to accomplish that. Irish whip. Demero ducks under. Catches the boot. Oh, big clubber and blow right to the back. Ricky Starks saying right on top of Joe Demero. Irish whip off. Big back elbow. Nice boot there by DeMero. Ooh, and Ricky may have just got his. Yeah, he's, he's being blinded by that headband kind now. Kind of overconfidence. Oh my god, big German suplex! <laughs> you saw. Mark saw Champ Champion, you know, had him, and uh, DeMero and Prince Adam inadvertently helping him, and then had to break up the three count. Big back elbow. Looking for Larry, it catches him! But not going for the cover. I think he realized Adam was on the apron and needed to dispose of him. But Adam booting Mark Champion. Now Adam in the ring with tomorrow. Adam, the much smaller, fighting his way up. Ooh, big knee, sweeps the leg. Adam using his quickness to his advantage. Prince Adam now. Can he take advantage on DeMero? And what would it mean if, you know, Ricky Starks loses the... Oh, wait, Stunner catches him! Could this be a cover? No, Champion in from behind. Big stomp. Champion, you you got to have eyes in the back of your head in a contest like this. Brain Buster! He's brain Buster there now. Adam rolling him up. Mark Champion just able to get the shoulder up. And Ricky Starks may have almost lost the Pure Prestige title without even being pinned. And again, the, the danger of these fatal four ways. You see Joe DeMauro trying to recover in the corner. Adam psyching himself up. Now he goes, goes after DeMauro. Close lines. Falls it with another. Adam, you know, again, I say the smallest competitor in this matchup, but really showing a house of fire here. Smallest guy with just about the most fight. Starts, could he be thinking Angel's Wings? Adam able to float over, nicely done. Oh, God! Starks just speared himself into that chair that he set up. And now Adam, Adam needs to take advantage. He's Rick, going up top. Ricky may be out! Ricky may be this out! This might be it! Adam! Front splash! Cover! Got the hooks leg! Oh, wait a minute! Champion Ooh. pulling the referee out! We were Where, Prince Adam almost won the title. He, we were half a count away. Prince Adam almost beat Ricky Starks. Champion grabs a hold. T-Bone suplex into the buckle. Tamaro comes charging. Big running knee. Spear by Ricky Starks. Big spear by Starks. And that's it.
And your winner, and still Pure Prestige champion, Absolute Ricky Stark! Wow!